All right, what's up coach? Welcome back to the channel. Now, if this is one of your first videos that you've ever seen on my YouTube channel, uh, I'm gonna warn you that uh, what I'm gonna talk about today is something that I know coaches need to hear, uh, but coaches don't want to hear. All right, so it's advice that I wish someone told me, um, even I would say three years ago, right I, i've been in business for a very long time i've been self-employed uh for over a decade right i wish someone told me this earlier on it would have helped me tremendously and a lot of coaches that uh, i talk to during the week um if they don't know this then you know what like failure is going to happen and it's going to hurt a lot worse than it should um and this is going to be one of those things that honestly like i i know some coaches that watch this aren't gonna want to keep watching my channel anymore and i'm so cool with that uh odds are if i haven't talked to you i have no idea who you are <laughs> uh you don't know really who i am other than these youtube videos that you watch um and that's cool i don't i don't get offended when people unsubscribe from my channel um i sleep very good at night i'm gonna sleep my eight nine hours no matter what right so let's jump into it now that was too long of an intro so what am i talking about today well i'm talking about mentally tough coaches and mentally weak coaches right and there's a huge difference between the two right so let's start first with mentally weak coaches now normally when coaches when i say they're mentally weak it does i'm not saying they're stupid <laughs> right i'm saying when they face any sort of obstacle the first thing that they do is they cast blame on the situation right so let me give you a good example and this happened last week a coach reached out to me he was like yeah you know i've been trying to get clients more committed to my program but every time i talk to them right they don't want to invest that much or or they don't want to commit to the amount of time and i feel like there's something wrong with with them like they're not wanting to do it and the first thing like when he's saying that the first thing that's going off in my mind is well, he's going into these conversations already thinking that there's something wrong with his clients. And that mindset is going to make having those calls a thousand times harder because he's already going into it with that mindset, right? And the way I think is, well, maybe you need to change how you speak to them over the phone, or maybe you should start targeting people that are not that way. Right, so it starts with the business owner, right? It's not the client's fault, right? Another example, all right? Uh, I talked with a coach two days ago about this. He said, yeah, you know, my clients literally show up and they don't pay. Like, I'm sick and tired of working with them and I don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, if I went to Chick-fil-A and ordered a, a spicy chicken combo meal <laughs> with a sweet tea and i don't pay for it what are they going to do are, are they, are they going to just let me come back every single friday afternoon at 5 p.m and, and keep getting the same thing no they're just not gonna like like that would be physically impossible for me to do <laughs> right so this is where again he he was blaming his clients all right he's not looking at himself and i was like well just switch over like use this payment system i've been talking about at nauseum for the last five years on this channel like this is going to solve your problem if they don't pay then then don't work with them right but let's look at you you are the business owner let's not look at the clients and and i've said this before in other videos if you have like a crappy client situation the odds are it's because of you right it's because you attracted them into your ecosystem right and at any time like if, if someone's not a good fit you could just fire them right 
like why continue working with someone if they're not a good fit like what's what's the point of that like uh, there's absolutely zero point i'm not i'm the exact same way with my business like if i'm working with a client and they suck i look at myself and i say how in the world did i let them come into my ecosystem and then i go fix that so it never happened that type of client never comes into my program again all right i don't think oh like what's their problem why are <clears throat> why are they this way right so mentally soft mentally weak coaches first thing that they always do is they cast blame right and coaches that are watching this that might be mentally weak in this category right you're you're ignoring what i'm saying right now you're like well no you don't understand my situation yes i do there's still a cardiologist in my city who owes me around eight thousand dollars in that that took complete advantage of me when i was 23 years old all right that's not that dude's fault of course like the guy is not a good guy but that was my fault right that was my fault i was an absolute buffoon when i was running my business back then right that's on me that's not on him like if i would have known what i know now like the first time he didn't pay me <laughs> i would have just said hey like we're not going to do another session until you pay like no i was too nice i was mentally weak back then i had to go through a transition <laughs> from being mentally weak to mentally tough right all right so you can see there don't cast blame on your clients your clients didn't just magically show up in your program you like brought them into your program those are your clients that is your responsibility and if your clients suck then you need to take a deep long look in the mirror every morning and be like what do i need to change about myself so this crap stops happening it is not your client's fault that is like i'm telling you mentally weak people do that they never take responsibility they'll always look at oh the, well this client really like is so difficult to deal with when i always ask well what were the expectations that you set with that client before they joined oh well you know we just talked about how much it is per session and i was like that that is not expectations that's very transactional all right that's the first thing, right? Now, I can make this video like literally 12 hours long <laughs> if I want. I'm gonna give you another example though of what mentally uh, weak coaches do, right? Now, when you think about just business, right? In, in over a 30-day period, right? And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to keep this very simple. Over a 30-day period, more of those days are going to be uh, probably negative. Like if I take 30 days, there's out of that, like there's probably, you know, 16 out of the 30 days are probably going to be hard or harder than the other 14 days or however many days are, are in the month that month, right? So we know that, you know, most of the time it's gonna be hard, right? Most of the time, it's going to be hard. That that's like if you go into it with that sort of mindset, then you can accept the reality that most days are going to be harder. All right. So a lot of coaches that are mentally weak, though, they get so rattled when they have a bad day, and or they, they if they have anything that goes wrong in their business that specific day, it could be something so small too, so small. They let that small thing become like it's this like an atomic bomb right and then the next like six months of their business are all negative because they blew up over one little thing right and mentally weak coaches don't bounce back right and I'm not going to sit here and, and, and try to say that I'm like the most mentally tough human being in the world. I'm not, right? There are, there are absolutely days that I am just shattered where I'm like, oh my gosh, this sucks. And then the next morning when I wake up, I'm like, what do I need to fix? Right? How, how can I stop this from happening? Not, gosh, what is wrong with this client? No, 
it is never on the client it's on me so if you don't bounce back though right then whatever that little problem like that little problem that happened like let's say it's a failed payment right well that's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until you fix it right and like i see this happen all the times with coaches that that i speak with over the phone um don't let little things mound like they just get bigger and bigger and bigger they get and they explode and then the next year of their business they're like down in the dumps because they were unable to pivot or change or set higher expectations all right so mentally weak coaches this is what they do now if you're in this category i have really good news for you you can change right you can change I used to be that way, all right? And I have, I have the self-awareness to, to come on here and say this in front of the world. Like I used to be a, an absolute snowflake when it came down to stuff like this. Absolute, like so soft, so like, so worried about what the clients would say, all right? So worried if people were gonna take their kids out of my program. Right, I used to really struggle with this. So, like, you can't say, "Well, I don't know the situation." I do. Like, I, I've already lived through it. Right, already lived through it. Now, on the flip side, right, here's what mentally tough coaches do. Right, the first thing that happens when they face obstacles or adversity is they start to create solutions. Right. No matter if they have to look at themselves or if they have to like go back to the drawing board and redo things, they look at solutions. All right. I don't want to say they, we look at solutions, <laughs> right? And when we look at solutions, then it doesn't really matter what the problem is. Like the problem could be massive or it could be tiny. It doesn't matter. All right. But those solutions are the things that we concentrate on we're not thinking about oh who do we cast blame on or oh like why is my client doing that like no it's like well let's hop on a call let's figure this out and let's go back into our terms and change this so this never happens again <laughs> all right and so when your solution uh minded right if, when that is is something you think about when bad things happen then ultimately you have way less to worry about right you have way less to worry about because you can move forward with your confidence uh, with your business with confidence right when you have that sort of mentality right and a great example of this right you could take whoever your favorite athlete is all right hopefully it's not lebron <laughs> i'm just kidding uh, but let's say it's LeBron, right? Like when you think about, and I remember this vividly, all right? I think it was in the early 2000s. They were playing against, uh, it was when he was on the Cavs. They were playing against the Pistons. And he scored like 45 points in a row or something like that. It was just something unbelievable, right? Now, like I'm sure there were plenty of times in that game where his teammates let him down, Right? He like he wasn't sitting there crying about it. He just took charge. He he was like, "I'm the solution in this game. <laughs> Give me the freaking ball and move out of my way." Right? That is the difference that I'm talking about. All right? Be solution like you are driven to create solutions on the go. Something bad happens, boom, what's the solution? Let's think that way. Let's not think, "Well, why do we need to like why is this client doing this?" Right? Because there's enough bad things that will happen in your business. If, if you are not uh, thinking about solutions, like you're going to be concentrating your entire day on the negative, right? which is hard. That's hard to operate with that sort of mentality because you'll, you'll be uh, scarcity-minded. Um, you're always going to hate your clients. You're like, I can just, I could give you 500 different examples of, of things that will happen when you when you wake up that way all right now another thing that uh coaches that are winners that just figure things out and and you know they're 
they are mentally tough is you know when they wake up in the morning all right they can forget about yesterday right they can absolutely forget about yesterday where it's like whatever happened yesterday like if if we didn't solve what that problem is like first thing in the morning like we're going to solve it today but we're like we're, we're not going to concentrate on the negative stuff that happened all day yesterday or all week or all month like and to give you a good example something that i did within my business right and i have zero problem sharing this because i know some of these people will watch this video uh but it's a reality in 2020 no no, no 2019 uh, I had a lot of coaches that I was working with during that time. And I had a very low price point for my consulting program. And there was a one month period of time, right? This happened 30 days in a row, <laughs> which like this was a nightmare to deal with. But I'll show you what happened and I'll show you how I fixed it, right? So 30 days in a row, there were people who weren't, some people who weren't paying a premium to join that uh, program because I wanted to aggressively scale that program and I was looking to ramp it up. I was looking to get a lot more coaches to help. And uh, what happened was because a lot of people weren't that serious about it, they were bad clients. They weren't going through my program. They weren't logging in. Uh, they weren't asking questions. And they would text me. People would text me like, hey, like, how do I do this? How do I do that? And uh, I was like, no, no, no. We, we need to do this in the program, right? And so I had a lot of people that I brought in to my, my, into my ecosystem, into my business. And my problem was I didn't set expectations with them from day one, right? It was not their fault. It was my fault, right? It was my fault. And although I was mad that they weren't, like doing things the way that I wanted, right? I realized, well, I need to go back to the drawing board and change. Like, and I made two changes uh, over that 30 day period. Plus there was a lot of failed payments. Like people who don't pay me don't continue to work with me, right? Uh, and so what I did is I fired a bunch of people that month, a bunch of people. And I was like, man, like this is gonna ding my income a little bit when I do this. And I was like, but what's better for me? Is it having my income dinged a little bit or continue working with people that are difficult to work with, right? And I went with that decision of like, no, I need to like just cut ties, like uh, reframe what I do, make it like, a lot easier for people to understand before they join that this is exactly how I do it. And if you don't want to do it this way, then don't work with me type of thing. Right. And once I switched that, then I switched the, the price of what I do. Um, cause the results of people that I do work with that do the job and they follow the program, they do great. Uh, and I was like, this is not for, for me. It's not about having a super high volume of clients. It's about having the right people in and having people that meet my standards that I set. So again, it could have been me just complaining about these clients. Oh, like, why aren't they paying? Or, oh, these guys are difficult. And, and trust me, there were days where I was absolutely furious and fuming. But at the end of the day, I had to look back at myself and say, no, I got to fix this, right? This is something that like, I need to create a solution here. It, it's not on them. It's on me, right? So I hope this video helps. Like it's giving you insight to my business, <clears throat> but I, I think it should give you some insight on how to think when bad things happen because bad things do happen and they will happen and you can't avoid bad things from happening in your business, right? And that that's just, that's part of it, right? And this is why like I, I laugh when I think about this, but like, a lot of coaches that watch this channel for the first time, they're like, oh, I want to go like train kids and start a business and have a bunch of clients. They're, all of that sounds positive. They're not thinking three years into it when uh, 20 clients just canceled. <laughs> um, 
or people's payments are failing. Like they're not thinking about any of those things because they're so addicted to the stuff on social media that looks cool, right? Um, starting a business is not cool. <laughs> starting a business is probably going to be one of the hardest things that you face in your life. Like assuming you've had a pretty normal life, like, I mean, even if you had a hard childhood, starting a business is, is going to be very, very difficult. It's not for everybody, right? So I hope this video helps. I know like I talked about a lot of different stuff in here, but you can be mentally soft like me when I was in my early 20s and just be a snowflake. Um, you do that, your business, like I don't even want to say your business won't grow, but you personally won't grow. Like, and that's to me, that's even worse. That's way worse than your business not growing. It's like if you don't personally grow, then it's physically impossible for your business to grow too. Like you can't stay the same person, right? And when you're mentally tough and and you just have like the winner's mindset, you'll always create solutions, right? No problem will be too big, right? You'll always be able to, to find solutions. And that just comes down to thinking outside the box, being creative, being resourceful. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you today. I hope this video helps. And uh, if you have any questions for me, shoot me a text. My phone number's in the link or somewhere down in the description. All right, see you later.